and we'll see if we can't just make each other just a little bit better, even if we make different decisions. Essentially, I'm describing utopia. <laughs> or not, I don't know. Let's sync this up. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am desperate for your help. That's right. So what I'm trying to do is plan as much as possible for the next project, not just the normal planning, but we're gonna change up some details. We're always trying to do things a little bit better or more efficient every time. And we're working with a new engineer who I spent a couple hours on Zoom last week. It's gonna be awesome. I'm very much looking forward to this. I've sent him a bunch of these details to just kind of get the ball rolling, but, but we just keep refining them. And our, our other engineer, well, he finally fully retired. So I talked to him last week too. He's enjoying his retirement, which is fantastic. He certainly earned it. I get a little misty eyed every time I think about him. We've worked together for over 20 years. And boy, he's taught me a lot along the way. Anyway, so what I need from you is your biased and unbiased commentary in the comments below. What my goal is here is to really facilitate or at least get started a discussion. Let's leave the ideology and politics out of it, if you don't mind. And let's just talk about the stuff from the standpoint of, is it really worth doing this as opposed to that? Or I like that detail, but you can make it better if you do this. Have you thought about this product? Why aren't you doing this other thing? And my brother's gonna follow up a lot of this with the building science stuff over on The Build Show. He's at Pioneer Builders Inc. on Instagram and The Build Show and YouTube. So, but I'm gonna primarily focus on the structural stuff and, and like that's my contribution to this. Some of this is driven by the Washington State Energy Code. Some of it is, maybe most of it is driven by our desire to just build a better house for our clients, one that's more efficient and more comfortable. And we'll get into some of the seismic stuff too as we get in. So looking at this picture, this is the product project. If you look at the Madrona playlist, we, we documented this entire process from the foundation all the way through the roof and the siding. So right now you're looking at the great, great wall that is 44 feet long, about 25 feet tall to the peak. We balloon framed that entire thing. You can see that and I'll show you more detail. We add the overhangs and then we lift the wall. In this case, the rafters on the back, on the horizontal, they travel about 16 feet and then they hit that wall and they continue on up to the ridge. So these are about 29 foot long rafters. We elected to go eye joist this time. They're a lot lighter weight. They're more consistent, nice and flat. But we've also done, done this house before with two by 12s that just split over that uh, intermediate wall. Okay, so let me show you here in SketchUp. Here is a look of that eaves wall, the overhang, and the great, great wall without windows. <laughs> it just is easier to draw. I don't have all that time in the world. Now let's go ahead and zoom in, and I'll just walk you through what our standard practice typically is. We always frame our rake walls with the top plates flush with the top of the rafters. In that way, like this piece of zip roof, it can just extend all the way out over the overhangs, okay? We don't put a rafter on it, not because it really matters structurally, but the double top plate, it's easier for us to rig and lift with the forklift. That's the basic reason for that. Okay, what we are going to do different on this house is this back wall, instead of the rafters landing on top of the wall, I had what I thought was a genius idea of there's only a couple of eaves walls. Why don't we just go ahead? It's only five studs on either side of the window. Why don't we just go ahead and frame those walls to the top of the rafter plane as well? Here's what that would mean. It would mean that our studs would have a miter. It would mean that our double top plates would probably be two by eight material and we would rip it. It means that we would hanger the eye joist rafters to a ledger that's attached to this wall. Now, right off the bat, you're probably thinking this seems like a whole lot of labor, but just hang with me here for just a minute. I'm gonna come back around and then we'll, we'll do all of these details one by one. So let's start with the wall. Why do we wanna frame the wall to the top? Well, you notice here on the rake wall that we can put insulation, the, or the insulator can install insulation all the way up and cram it underneath the uh, double top plates. Then of course the rafter bays are gonna get insulated. We're going to use zip R6 on this house, which is a one inch piece of poly ISO foam with the 7 16 wood structural panel attached to it. And yes, we do still get shear value. It's diminished because of the one inch foam. The way to make up for that is with a longer nail and more of them. And that's something that the engineer has to go over. So the reason why we want to do this is we can run the zip R all the way to the top. And now we have completely covered all the way around all of the studs with insulation. So it's like putting a coat on, right? We're now completely bundled up. Now there's, there's some uh, advantages to that. We want to tape the zip roof 
to the zip r6 seal up the uh the rafter base for insulation and basically tape the house like it's a present so at the bottom of the wall the zip r6 would be taped to the foundation with the sig centrum and so from the concrete all the way up if you do what steve basic always says and you draw your red pencil without lifting it off or your red pen we want this thing to just be wrapped up like a present and be airtight and then we're going to manage the air in order to do that we have to employ what you may have seen over on the build show is some call it monopoly framing where basically you frame the house with no overhangs and then you attach the overhangs now you're probably thinking that doesn't sound that smart structurally but but just put it in context we have airplanes that fly very high we have submarines that go very deep and there's pressure involved we have bridges and skyscrapers and all manner of, of, of equipment. You just have to engineer it. Is it worth the engineering? And that's what we're going to document as we go through this, this project. So coming back to this detail, we would frame the rake wall first. And here's a pro tip for you. If you story pull and lay out your rake wall once it's up, then for this back wall, just take your measurements off that wall. It's an as-built. If you screwed up the, uh, the big rake wall, well, then just match the screw up to that back wall. You're probably not going to make a, a big mistake. Probably not, but we're going to story pull it, right? And we'll show you that as we go along. This video is just an amuse-bouche to the summer of videos that will be coming out. Now, the overhang, let me just walk you through what my thought process is. And again, feel free to disagree with me. So right here is a 2 by 4 ledger and a two by four ledger. These are 16 inch overhangs that will get LP smart side soffit on the underside. That's gonna help keep that wall nice and stiff too, by the way. It's gonna be unvented. So it's a solid piece, 16 foot long, 16 inches wide. We have two by six subfascia, five quarter by eight LP smart side fascia board. These little rafters are all of one foot three and a quarter long across the diagonal. So there's not very much weight here and we don't have a snow load. Because we're using the zip R, we have to use longer fasteners to penetrate the foam into the framing. And we have a couple of jumbo nailers that will shoot five inch nails. So that's what we'll attach this with. Now, right here, I'm just going to erase this. What my plan is, is to see what the engineer thinks. If I run a screw like this, the Simpson strong tie SDWC truss and rafter school, or their new, I think it's the SWD. Remember this all comes from mass timber, but those fully threaded screws then rely on the threading. And if I run one right through all of that, that should help to hold up the weight, right? That's my thought. And the SWD has some, I think, reverse threading where it will help to pull things together. So that's my thought. It's not very many. You know, these little guys are like two foot on center. So it's like 11 of them are going across this wall. It's not very much labor. Now, something you might've noticed right off the bat is why are we stopping the roof sheathing right here where my little fake tape is, <laughs> is drawn? Couldn't we just put a high quality acoustical sealant across the top plates, bed the roof sheathing into that, and then we would, we would have our air tightness. Brian doesn't really like the idea of that. We're probably still going to do that, but we want to tape this because we can quality control it and we can see it. And we've seen some of these videos, Travis over at Catalyst, uh, Matt Reisinger, a lot of these guys have posted these details successfully. We're just adapting them slightly. And then like as, as a framer, what my preference would be is to take this sheet and run it all the way here, right? Because now it spans the wall and it helps to hold the overhang. Ah, that, that would be my preference on the structural side. But again, if this is all designed and engineered, then we would just simply, let me just delete this guy. That's how it would look until we actually were sheathing the roof. Well, actually this guy would be gone too. This is basically how it would look until we sheathed the roof. Then we would sheathe this first tape at the bottom, and then we would add these rips. Now, what about on the inside? Let me zoom all the way around here. On the inside, I mentioned that we would be attaching these. So I'll have the engineer specify the LVL. And I think we're going to rip it the full cut depth of the eye joist. And then these brown circles represent SDWS timber screws from Simpson Strong Tie. That's what we all use to hold our decks up now. The literature is extensive. The testing is extensive. We absolutely love those. So the engineer will have to specify every two feet, how many does he want on each stud and into the top plates? And does he want anything intermediate. One thing is that you notice here, obviously there's some spaces behind this. We would just have to pre-insulate that over the window. Not, not difficult. It used to be that we were framers. Now we're a whole lot of other things too. All right. There's a lot of information. There's kind of a, a, a more look from the cross section. I, I probably would not bevel this bottom, but maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll decide that. So why do I want to do all of this? 
Let me come over here back to the images of the other house. When it comes to iJoyce Raptors, there are some annoyances about those Raptors. In fact, I'm gonna show you, this is the, the layout for this house that I've been going over. So this is a PWT layout. It's gonna come through IWP up here. But notice how awesome it is that they print all of the details right on the iJoyce layout. Now the details I'm most interested for the sake of this video are anything that have to do with the roof. So you notice J2 is if we ran the rafters over the ridge, we would have to then make this gusset and block and potentially insulate. Oh, I don't wanna do that, that's a lot of work. For the rafter connection, straps up and over, and that helps prevent uplift and high winds. Now let's look at the overhang details. If I scab two by four tails, look at the extra work. I have the tail, I have a cant strip, my block, and I have web stiffeners and squash blocks. At least I think. Come over to H4, here's another overhang detail. Here's another overhang detail. Here's the cant strip. I could use these, uh, the, just the eye joists themselves as soffit. And here's another version. I definitely don't wanna do the bird's mouth because then there's extra reinforcement. So we elected to go with the cant strip. Let me show you what that looks like. We, we get two pieces out of the table saw as we go, and then we nail them to the walls, and that way the rafter, the eye joist rafter can just shoot right past with no cutting besides the top and bottom. Okay. Here is the LSSR hanger from Simpson Strong Tie that I am already ledgering to a glue lamb so that this other roof can overframe. And that way we have a smooth vaulted ceiling on the inside. We don't have any irregular lines to that. My thought was if I'm doing this to basically half the room, why not just do it to the rest of the half? I think that makes sense. Now, here's what I'm trying to avoid. Notice that on the right, our rake wall is framed right flush with the top of the rafter plane. So the roof sheathing will just come right over that. It will connect up to the lookout, the top plates, the overhang framing, and then the rafters. But then notice all the extra work here. One, I'm going to show you a mistake that we made. I made. We have to scab the tails on. Not a big deal. We already pre-built our soffits. These are 16-inch soffits. I put the blocks in, have to cut the blocks, and have to notch the hole for ventilation. Not going to have to do that this time. And then this is the mistake. Because we went ahead and let the rafters run a little long, we had to cut out a bunch of our soffit framing. If this was 24 on center, it would have lowered it. It wouldn't have had to do that, but live and learn. I'm showing you the warts. Then here's the attachment for uplift. It's the, it's the Tresson rafter, school to, rafter screw, the SDWC. I put one on each side, down through the can strip, down to the double top plates. And then after this, the blocking would get attached. So why are we doing all of this? If I go back to the drawing, what our goal is, is since we're using, oh, come on now, make you all dizzy. Since we're using the Zip R6, we want to extend the R6 all the way to the top. It will go on the side too, all the way to the top of the top plates on the rake wall and on the eaves wall. That's like putting on a coat, right? Now we're completely covering all of the framing with the exception of the roof. So we can still get thermal bridging on the rafters themselves, but that will get closed cell spray foam, some kind of bat material. We want to do this because it, we don't feel like it's a whole lot of extra labor. You saw all the details for the eye joist. There's a lot of labor there. I, I think we're probably going to be about the same either way. But the advantage for me as the framer is that I get to frame all of these walls as tall as they can possibly be, run my sheathing all the way up, pre-attach my overhangs like I always do. But now we can tape the roof sheathing to the wall sheathing. I don't have to cut and install bird blocks. I don't have to install A35s or RBC clips that go on the bird block to the top plate and help to transfer the roof diaphragm loads down to the shear walls. And I can skip the H2.5As or the screws for the rafters themselves. There's a whole bunch of just like piddly tedious stuff that I can avoid if I go ahead and I just hang these. Again, this is all pending the engineer's review. The LSSR hangers, I believe, are going to eliminate the need for any other hardware and because the roof diaphragm is directly nailed into these top plates, like you can see here, then there's no need for blocking. This is crazy stiff and strong, which helps in earthquake. Our load path is continuous from the top plates all the way down, right? Right from the double top plate, same thing with the, with the rake wall sheathing. It's continuous all the way down by blocking down to the mud cell. And it feels very simple to me. So here is my big ask of you all. Will you help me make these details better? Now you and I are probably gonna make some different decisions 
because I know what my crew is capable of in me. I know what my preferences are. I, I like to use screws because impact driver or drill makes that real fast. The zip R six does add a little bit layer of complication, but not very much. It installs the same as any other wood structural panels, just a little bit thicker, longer router bit, longer nails or fasteners. And then don't be offended if I don't take your, <laughs> your, your suggestion because it just doesn't quite work as well for us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of all our lessons learned. So this video is just an amuse-bouche. This is, hey, this is what we're looking forward to doing. It's a taste of future content, explanation, engineering, etc., the building science, all of that good stuff. And then as the videos are released, we can see between now and then what changes did we make? And as we went along, what did we really wish that we wouldn't have done? Maybe nothing. I don't know. So thank you all in advance for any of your comments. Let's, uh, let's if you don't mind, let's leave the trolling. What, what I'm really hoping to someone else on somebody, hey, go, go troll the Perkins brothers, but not, not here <laughs> or not. Just don't be a troll. What I, my, what I really hope here is that the comments really inform the YouTube series. Some of the questions for the engineer, who, by the, by the way, pays attention to all of this. Future code officials. We'll see a bunch of this stuff show up over at the Build Show Network. And we'll see if we can't just make each other just a little bit better, even if we make different decisions. Essentially, I'm describing utopia. <laughs> or not. I don't know. All right. I love you all. Thank you for watching this video. If you want, share it to five people that you know. Maybe, maybe the five people you like the least. <laughs> and then give it a thumbs up. I don't know. We'll see you in the next video.